Welcome back guys. Today we are going to go through the questions that you should ask as a candidate in a job interview when it comes to IT roles and when it comes to cloud roles and all the things that I usually talk about and really try and get the answers to the questions that usually come up later. So try and get your answers before you actually start the job. So asking these questions before you start the job and actually before you even sign on the dotted line, these questions are actually going to help you understand if you really want the role. I think that these questions are often overlooked. I think that people usually find that the interview process is very one one way so the interviewer asking you all the questions but these are the questions that I think that you should ask to make sure that you actually want the role and that it's the right fit for you so if you're new to the channel you can probably have a quick look back and see all the questions and answer type videos that I have for roles like Microsoft 365 Microsoft Azure some system administrator type roles have a quick look and see if you're interested in those if you've landed the interview and maybe you've even got the job offer this is the time to ask these questions to make sure that the job is the right fit for you so the first question to ask is, have you hit that like button and that subscribe button? If not, I need you to hit it for me now. Thank you. Now that's done. So in the IT space, in my opinion, one of the most important questions that you need to ask your employer is about overtime. So as a previous system engineer, as a previous system admin, and as a general BAU engineer in the past, I know that I value my time outside of work just as much as everyone else. A lot of organizations will try and get you to sign contracts that include you doing things like collecting toil and possibly not even getting paid for any overtime or changing your shifts around a lot to make sure that it works for the customers. Now that's fine if it's right for you. But from the get-go, you need to understand what the actual agreement is. Are you going to be receiving toil? Are you going to be receiving time and a half? Are you going to be receiving no payment at all for overtime? This is very important because in the IT space, we are often doing all sorts of things after hours. If you're in the IT space already, you already know that you're going to be doing changes after hours. You're going to be doing implementations after hours. You're going to be doing all sorts of things after hours, maybe even just simply taking a phone call after hours because your vendor support is from another country and it's in a different time zone. So make sure that you understand how you value your time before you actually ask this question as well. Are you happy with getting paid time and a half? Are you happy with taking toil? Are you happy with just being flexible? So maybe you work two hours at night and then the next morning you'll start two hours later. But it's a very important question to ask. And I find that the easiest way to ask is to ask how they pay your overtime. So my suggestion is don't actually give them too much option. So don't say something like, will you be giving me toil for my overtime if you actually want time and a half? I would actually just be upfront and I'd say, are you paying time and a half or double time for overtime when we're doing changes after hours and whatnot? Next question should be about the on-call roster. So a lot of companies, whether they're an MSP or whether they're an actual internal IT team, they have something called an on-call roster. So a lot of the time being in the IT space, you're gonna to have to be on call so you can see things like alerts or you can pick up tickets when something goes down in the middle of the night. So it's important to understand if there is an on-call roster and how many people it actually rotates through because maybe you don't want to be on call for two weeks at a time. Maybe you're happy with one week at a time. It's important for you to understand at this point what they actually have to offer when it comes to on-call and also a very good chance to ask how they actually pay on-call. All sorts of organizations pay in different ways. Some pay you for the whole time up front for being on standby and other companies like to pay you for the calls that you get during standby. Other companies just like to pay you a bit of loading. So make sure that it works for you. The next question is about red tape. So this is very important. In my first IT roles, I found that there was a lot of red tape at the organizations I was working at. So for example, being in the IT team, you would be very limited in what you could do depending on whether you are a DBA or whether you are a network admin or whether you are a Wintel engineer or whether you are a desktop engineer, there's red tape. So you can't actually do networking tasks if you're a desktop engineer or you can't do system engineer tasks if you're a DBA. Now maybe you're in a position where you actually want to be able to do a lot of that stuff but you don't actually want that job title, but you want the flexibility to work on what you want. Maybe that's what you're used to. Maybe you're just trying to learn it all. This is the time to ask that question. Some organizations are very strict on this and you really need to understand what their policy is around it. I much prefer a company that actually allows me to work on any type of tech stack that I want. That's because I enjoyed working on multiple things and that is actually how I got into cloud engineering and Microsoft 365 and Wintel engineering. And for a while I even did a bit of Red Hat support. So I think it's very important for you to establish these boundaries straight away because maybe not being able to work on multiple different techs 
is going to actually be a showstopper for you. Maybe you won't sign anymore. What will I be working on? That is the next question you should ask. You should really understand what your day is going to look like when you actually take the role. So if you're a wind tow engineer, it's really important that you maybe have another wind tow engineer in the interview or maybe that the interviewer can describe to you a day in the life of one of the wind tow engineers on that team. This is important because sometimes in the IT space, it's quite common for organizations to tell you it's a wind tow role, but then when you talk about the tasks, to you, they might actually sound very desktop-y. So maybe you don't wanna be working on print servers and printers. Maybe you are accustomed to a desktop engineer doing that. So try and understand what your day-to-day -day tasks will be. So what type of tickets you will be working on, what type of designs you will be implementing. Maybe if it's an MSP, you can even ask them what type of text your customers have so you can understand what you're working on. So just really make sure that you know what your day is going to look like once you've got the job. Why are you hiring? This is a really important question. So when you go for job interviews, for example, in the IT space, a lot of the time you are being hired because of growth. A lot of the time you are being hired because someone has resigned and sometimes you're being hired because there's a new customer that's coming on so it's really important for you to understand what the reason for hiring is now sometimes organizations won't be a hundred percent honest with you at this point but it's important for you to try and gauge whether it's you know a true statement or not so I'll tell you why this is important because if a organization is growing that means you are maybe being hired to work on a new customer if an organization is getting rid of someone or someone has left, you might actually be a bit more interested in why that person has left. So make sure you ask that question. I think that maybe one of the best answers is that there was an internal promotion. So maybe one of the system engineers has now moved to the project team and they are looking to replace that system engineer. Now that tells you that there's a lot of internal growth within that organization and that is something that I would be really willing to move into. A lot of organizations pay you to do certifications. Now, when I was in my early roles, this was starting to become a more common thing. And I used to think that it probably was a bit of a gimmick. But looking back, I probably should have taken those opportunities a lot more than I did. So make sure you ask the question whether the organization is actually willing to pay for you to go get certifications. For example, if a customer comes on board and that customer has a full Microsoft 365 stack, but you have no certificates or experience in Microsoft 365, will that organization be willing to send you to some sort of course and pay for you to get certified because this actually helps you grow as well just as much as the company. So now is a good time to understand whether you are going to be having to chase these certificates yourself or whether your organization is going to pay for them for you. What is my escalation path? I think it's very important to understand where you sit in the type of hierarchy of engineers. So if you're a wind tow engineer, generally you're going to be the last point of contact when it comes to a ticket that can't be resolved. You're expected to actually resolve that ticket. Now, in, in the case that you can't, the only real escalation path might be a vendor or maybe a specialist. So personally, me, when I was applying for jobs, I always like to be third level support because the next type of support will be a vendor. I like that type of responsibility, but maybe not everybody does. So make sure that you ask that question and depending on the answer, that might sway you in which direction you are going to go, whether you're going to take this job or not. Okay, so those are just some of the questions that I think you should ask. I really think you should make a strong list and think about what is really important to you. Don't be shy to ask questions, especially don't be shy to ask questions about money because it's very important that you see value in the role, whether it comes to the amount of growth you have in that role or whether it comes to how much you are being paid. I think it's very important and that you don't want to undervalue yourself. So make sure that you are asking the right questions and that you will feel and make sure that you are writing a list before you actually go to your final interview or whatever it is to make sure that you have all the knowledge to make the right decision. I hope that helps. Good luck with your job interviews. I hope that really helps and helps you understand the type of questions you should ask. If you have anything that you think you should add, then drop them in the comment section below and we'll see you next time.